Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're doing good stuff. I don't know, for some reason, I think of some sort of like Mexican bandit whenever I say his name. Although technically, I guess it would be a Spanish bandit since the developers are Spanish, not Mexican. Yes. Anyway, so we are doing the DPS version of Gustav. We will be playing around all of his songs. And I know it says heavy metal here, but Gustav is not a I'm a singer yelling kind of guy. He's a he's more of a uh -huh. kind of singer. I apologize, but he, there's going to be he's a small little frog, high pitched voice, lots of sharp. That is the end all be all of this build. Uh, if you notice here, Heavy Metal says, when you play a song, deal mind damage, apply insane, and gain sharp. Possibly one of the, like, the most effects you can have on a card. So, we're really going to build around this whole, when you play a song, get sharp. Oh, and by the way, deal damage. So, every song we build gets stronger, because eventually we're going to get to level 3, and it says Shrill Tones here. I, like I said, he's he's not a, he's not a, a screaming Heavy Metal kind of guy. He's a I pitch kind of. Anyway, the plus one sharp, which is a big deal because we have lots of ways to do sharp and sharp on heroes increases mind damage. So early on, heavy metal will just be getting us lots of sharp, which is great. And it'll do a, a flat amount of damage every time. But once you get shrill tone, then every time you play a song, the next song will get will deal a stronger heavy metal proc. And these there's some weird finesse with the heavy metal procs I don't quite understand because it'll, it'll, it'll ignore block, but it'll go highest person if they're immune kind of stuff. So it's it's got some weird triggers going on here, but basically just treat it like anytime you play a song, do an attack. And once you hit level three, those attacks get stronger every time you play a song because your sharp will be going up. So the goal for Gustav here is we're going to try to cap out our sharp super quick. He can do it all by himself. It doesn't really need any help. And uh, by doing so, to do so, we just need to have lots of cards and play lots of songs. So really the goal for the rest of our team here is, yes, apply vulnerable, apply powerful, stuff like that. Give him bless, give him sharp, but he really doesn't need help with the sharp and the bless. And he just needs cards. I just want to have, I just need to inspire the frog so he can sing a song. Everyone just needs to focus on the frog. Listen to the concert that will hurt your ears. Hopefully I didn't hurt your ears too much in my intro. It hurt. Practicing the intro hurt my voice a little bit. Anyway, so heavy metal, shrill tone. Oh, by the way, our passive here says at the start of the turn, have stanza. You'll always have stanza one, no matter what. Every turn, stanza one or better. So we can assume stanza one. We don't have to play any cards that give it that to us, which opens up some options for our damaging spells or the song spells that we'll be playing. Um, yes, it, it just it's nice to have access to that. Uh, ethereal weapons we're actually not going to use ethereal weapons uh it's it's kind of slow and it's its biggest benefit is the turn after you play it so i'd recommend ethereal weapons if you're helping someone else do sharp damage but if gustav's doing his own sharp damage i'd rather just go encore so that our big turn when we have heavy metal rocking we can do two songs in a row instead of just having plus two mind damage because we're not going to have the ethereal knives on the first turn we play ethereal weapons so I would say Heavy Metal, Shrill Tones, Encore, and you have to play Encore before your spell, not after your spell. Just throwing that out there as a technical snafu with the wording. And then uh, Wide Sleeves. Uh, wide Sleeves and Choir, neither of them have a really big impact to our build, but Wide Sleeves is going to be very easy and accessible to us. Uh, it's been changed, so it's, it's much more useful these days where, hey, as long as I have one small weapon I play a turn, I get two more free small weapons. So it's just... Our one small weapon in our deck becomes three attacks, which can be very viable. You can miss sometimes getting like the poison flask, which isn't technically an attack, but then you can also get like the double and triple strikes <clears throat> from the other small weapons. So it's kind of a gamble, but it only costs us keeping one small weapon in our deck through the entire game. And that's perfectly OK, because it's it's not that big a deal. We we will be happy to pay that price. Yes, heavy metal, shrill tones. That is the game plan with Gustav. All right, let's get to his starting deck. So you may notice I took out a lot of the expensive songs, like Annoying Whistle and stuff. We want to bring down our, our price tag here on all of our spells. We added another chance of accuracy, and we have the option to have the best chance of accuracy, which is the zero cost targeting self. So this is the end all be all of the build, because once we have Heavy metal rocking, uh, you can just play chant of accuracy to give yourself sharp and then trigger a damage that gives you more sharp. 
and it 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 can get pretty out of hand you will cap out on sharp in act one just fine uh deflect is just a free card here uh, I normally don't recommend it on DPS builds, but the for Gustav, we really want to do, he's that, that one turn combo kind of thing. So just, just a filler card here to, to fill in the space. Uh, Ode to War, uh, most of my runs, I actually didn't run this. I did run it in some of the practice videos here and, and stuff like that, because the goal with Ode to War is I just need to have 10 powerful on my turn. So I can rely on myself to do that with Ode to War, because remember it says it requires stanza one, but Gustav starts with stanza every turn. He will always have access to stanza one, so you'll always be able to play Ode to War or Ode of War. So this is basically just the zero cost four powerful, which is fantastic. Uh, it is a card spot that if you can get away with not using it, you can have other people give you power. Great. Otherwise, fill this in for yourself. Uh, we're upgrading these shivs to the ones that apply insane. This is not a required upgrade, but it is a nice little just synergy because we will be doing a lot of mind damage. <clears throat> these will not trigger the heavy metal so that is one of our weakest cards but this is the card we're going to keep till the very end for the level five talent so that we can trigger the wide sleeves because this is the small weapon of choice for us just it's a zero cost it's sharp damage and it is insane stacks so i'll keep one of these to the end of the game they are probably the weakest card of this setup here uh like ode to war just because it's not an attack uh but this this is one of the ones i'll cut earliest but it's one i'm going to keep at least one the entire game Camouflage, we just want to be able to draw cards. Sharp is the name of our game. And Stealth, we will have one or two big hits here. You can see our big hit of choice is going to be Multi-Shot. Uh, you can upgrade that to... Um, where is it? All, not all heroes, all monsters. I'm, we don't want to attack our friends here, so I know they have to listen to our song, but we're not trying to punch them beyond that. Uh, you could use Fan of Knives if that's uh, something you divine. Uh, I don't really... Fan of Knives isn't necessarily as strong as Volley. Where's Volley here? Volley. Both of those are rares, though, so I don't recommend... Like, I'm not going to put them here in the starting guide, but Volley is better if you can afford it, and Fan of Knives is better if you can afford it. Fan of Knives also has a nice upgrade that does based on sharp damage, but we really don't need to play into this, uh, as you'll see in the later acts as we progress. We will... I'll usually have Volley by the end of the game. Fan of Knives would fit in the same spot, but it's not really our, our claim to fame it's just a nice like don't get me wrong this multi-shot really saves our bacon in the in the opening act for sure but we're really just playing around heavy metal so unfortunately there aren't any if you see i have this all monster tag here there are no songs on this list these are all ranged attacks melee attacks poison here's here's one here's a eternal lullaby cost five it only hits once though and that's the problem so yes it's a song but it costs so much energy it only hits once we'd rather be paying two for one to everyone instead of five for one to everyone so this is also rare it's just there's unfortunately very few song options for our big finisher for gustav all right where we get here power slave this is a big deal this is one that you will once you get encore you'll either encore this or in the final act or final floor you might encore something different but for the most of the time you're just going to encore this You'll cast Heavy Metal, you'll cast Encore, then you'll use Setup to fill your hand back up because Setup will draw net us a card, draw three, put one back, and playing a card yourself. So we gain basically one card to our hand. So play this, you gain an extra card. That makes Power Slave just a little stronger because this is based on the number of cards in our hand. This will give us our Powerful that we need, and it also gives us more Sharp. Hey, look, there's a lot of Sharp here. I, I told you, you will cap on Sharp super fast. Uh, it deals damage to all monsters and it applies insane to all monsters, which will increase the damage from our heavy metal. So the play pattern really is heavy metal, power slave, then do the rest of your stuff. And this is one of the first cards we want to cast because it's applying that insane. It's finishing off our powerful and it is applying sharp to ourselves. Like a lot of things are applying sharp to ourselves, but you know, the other stuff there. Also, it hits everyone. This is also a song spell, by the way. So remember I was saying I was trying to look for a song spell that hits all monsters. We start with it. Uh, I should probably look at the other versions of this before I get too carried away. Um, so unfortunately, the you have to be max level Gustav to get the, the X insane and the X sharp. You still do get some sharp and some powerful, but honestly, it's just a it's a song that hits everyone and it gives us some powerful in all versions. Because this is base two, so this will be plus by your uh plus one from your perk. So that's at least still three powerful. Uh yep, where are we at here? Uh, setup is drawing us cards and getting us through our deck. That's either setup is either to find heavy metal and power slave, 
or to refill our hand so the power slave does more damage. And then whispering lies, tell me lies, tell me whispering lies. This um, is the most efficient song that we have. So when we go to songs, uh, this is two energy for one hit, two energy for one hit, that kind of stuff. Five energy for four hits. Ugh. Like this, this is a fun song when I'm playing support Gustav, but if I'm trying to get benefits for my sharp, Eternal, Eternal Lullaby just does not benefit from sharp very well. Uh, Reverberant Verse, this is one we will pick up in the later game. We don't really need it right away. And uh, it's still not that efficient. This is better when we have Encore because this is three energy or three hits. But you do have to remember that because these are all songs, they get plus one extra hit from the heavy metal, which is why it's important we pick up that heavy metal and we, we draw it on our first turn and we play it our first turn. Three energy for one hit. Like you're see, noticing a theme here. There's just no efficient spells. And then of course, the whispering lies is uh, one energy for two hits. And we are picking up the perk that makes shadow damage uh, benefit from sharp as well. And remember Gustav, has his talent that says sharp will benefit mind damage. So our, our damage types of choice are shadow, mind, and sharp. And the reason I'm saying sharp is because let's go to perks. So in our perks, actually, let me look at everyone else's deck first because I, I don't want to get this out of order. So Gustav's starting deck, Mesglicht, Hendren, and Magnus. You do not need this team, but people do like to see those things. All right, uh, very perk hungry because we're doing multiple damage types, because we can't convert our sharp into mind damage until we're level three. Uh, but what we can do is we can convert our sharp into shadow damage. Uh, and Gustav does not have to pick this up. Someone else pick it up. Uh, let me just do it page by page. I apologize. So the frog is super fast. Uh, I'm actually running him a little slower so that uh, I can more easily keep Nesglect uh, in front of him because I do want my team to go before the frog. This is a very fast team though, because Gustav is just base fast to begin with. Uh, so I don't have to go all the way down to the speed perks here. Stealth is nice. We are using a little bit of stealth and uh, the more, so we might as well give it an extra charge and make sure that those charges are doing 25% per charge instead of 20% per charge. This adds up very fast. We're not really gonna dig deep into this like we do a lot of other scouts, but it is a very healthy benefit for us. Uh, we are doing a lot of piercing damage and we're picking up the sharp perk that says, hey, by the way, sharp increases piercing by one and a half. This is one reason why we're super happy to keep those shivs in the first act. And depending on your budget, you might actually craft a couple extra shivs instead of the more expensive cards I had there. Or if you don't need that ode to war for the powerful, because those shivs are just zero cost piercing damage. And we're going to have lots and lots of sharp. And so they will be doing 50 damage a piece. It's kind of a big deal. So max up the piercing damage. Sharp says piercing is super strong. Make sure, absolutely make sure that someone on the team has, well, I don't say absolutely. It's pretty a big deal to say shadow damage is buffed by sharp as well, because we are using whispering lies. That way we can double dip in sharp on our song spell. And then of course, team perk to say, hey, we don't lose charges and they can't be purged. Very few, very few times will the this save you from getting your sharp purged but when it does it's a big deal uh powerful i will definitely say for gustav you want the 10 percent per charge you're always welcome to do the the de charges decay slower and, and uh, remove at end of turn but if you want top tier damage right one is the way to go there's nothing wrong with going the middle one and then here again we're lots of damage types we will eventually be doing mostly mind damage. So we want to cap that out. Insane charges will increase our mind damage because that's lowering the enemy resistances. So we want to cap that out. Bless, we will be getting blessed from some of our teammates and we want that to be more powerful. So 1.5 per charge. And then, like I said, we are dealing shadow damage. So we're putting it in here. Of all the perks, this is the tree. This is the, this this one right here, the, the two shadow damage for cut three is the, the least important for sure. Uh, I, could, I could easily see just putting that back into shards instead or if you need this speed talent, or, you know, if you need it anywhere else. But that is the one I go with there. Yes, that is Gustav. Let's go to Nesglek perks. I'm just gonna quickly just highlight so you can see, I'm not gonna talk too much about this. This is very, very basic Nesglek stuff. 
and yeah right here just insane charges Nesglect here on my team specifically is here for just more insane charges to make Gustav do more damage also give him guards and energy and all the fun stuff <laughs> normal Andrin things here as well this is a support fast speedy Andrin he is just here to make the team go pew pew quick quick I don't know I don't know the sound going meow. make the team go meow there that's what we're talking about uh, this one's pretty nice for someone on the team to pick up. I should have mentioned this on Gustav's side. Uh, stanza increases all damage by one instead of just instead of just mind damage. This really helps in Act One specifically when Gustav is doing mostly sharp damage because now he he's guaranteed to start with stanza. So this basically just says Gustav does one more damage. So someone on the team should pick this up. Doesn't matter who. And last but not least, the Magnus doing normal Magnus things. Vulnerable, fortify. He's the one picking up this shadow. Sharp equals shadow. He's actually not applying any much sharp to um, Gustav. Like I said, the other teammates don't really need to apply the sharp because he does it by himself very well. Talents, starting decks, perks, team perks. Yep. Combat. Um, so one thing to note, I did pick up Betty here in the starting town kind of a big deal i also picked up the leather glove so i don't need that ode to war but whatever but this betty remember with pets if you buy one in the shop and then you go get one out on the field you get the corrupted version so for this run i was able to get a corrupted betty kind of a big deal i'll, I'll talk about it more later but all monsters do damage yeah that's that's nice that's very nice i like it a lot ah what do we got here I will breeze through the other folks as best I can, and then we will get to the Gustav stuff. Uh, one, two, three draws. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Yeah, I'm going to be singing that a lot. Uh, there's going to be a lot of singing on my part, because this is a bard class with a bard support, and there's much barding to be had. <laughs> Come up. Three energy left. Cool, that's everything. So like I said, this sharp is not very important to get to Gustav because he does so much on his own. But I mean, if you can, go ahead. I want to get the howls. Here, let's go with one. I got both howls. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, Nezglek should be able to put enough cards to Gustav. So let's just protect Nezglek from himself because he's a little insane and hurts himself. We do have a plus draw here, so I will scry myself. Mm, I probably don't need to scry. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Gustav does not sing that softly or gently. He is, he is a very shrill, very shrill frog. At least in my, my understanding of frog. Everyone will have their own uh, interpretation of said frogging. All right, so remember, I want on turn one, I want to get Power Slave and Heavy Metal. I don't have Heavy Metal yet, but for the most part, Shiv's my worst card. Whispering Wise is one of my other work, like least favorite cards. I want to, I would keep something like the Deflect here just so I could dig deeper. I don't need to in this case. I could probably get rid of the Deflect instead of this Whispering Lies, but I'll just show you this because there is one more instance of Sharp with that Camouflage. I do want to make sure I find the Camouflage so I can Camouflage into the Multi-Shot, so. If you are playing a character that can manipulate your top deck or do stuff like that, because whether that's Andrin or Nez, um, that is the kind of stuff you're looking to do. And this is just a mind blasting. Okay. <laughs> it's stuck in my head. I, it's it, it is the hazard. What do I got here? I got Ode to War. I wouldn't mind Ode to War, but I really don't need it. So with Power Slave, it says once you have the fully upgraded version, it says x equals half of your card hand so if i have 10 cards this will do four and a half and it will round up to five i don't know if that's because it's counting itself or because it actually rounds up that's not something i haven't eat uh, I, I can't think of a way to actually test that so if i had heavy metal i do that otherwise i go straight into power slave because this is going to cap me out on powerful and then i will just do my sharp stuff and if i have heavy metal that would trigger there but i don't and then i go into camouflage and multi-shot and when you look at that i have only 20 sharp but i have 10 powerful 
and free stealth and everything just disappears. This may give you um, vibes for Sylvie. Uh, yeah, it's it's very similar to play pattern. It's um, it's kind of powerful, but we will transition into later fights. So don't worry, this is not a Sylvie comp. It just feels an awful lot like it in Act 1. All right, uh, where are we at here? So I think we're to Act 2 decks. Then we'll talk, we'll do an Act 2 combat, and we'll talk about items. Just, uh... All right, so we now have Heavy Metal. This is a big deal, and why I'm going to show you an Act 2 combat. So this Reverberant voice Verse, I actually don't recommend picking this up in Act 2, usually Act 3, uh, but I bring it up as a talking point. I am here in the green biome, so I actually... AoE is, is best for the boss fight. This will only help me with like the spider queen or the fisherman. So if you go in the green biome first, which I recommend, and I'll tell you why with items, then you actually don't need reverberant voice until act three, where you're actually fighting like a big single target monster boss. Does that make any sense? Because the Hydra, this this volley will, will do me good. And we did upgrade. So all monsters. Our options here are fan and knives. There's... So Volley is four energy for eight instances of hits. It is, mind you, all sh piercing damage, which remember our sharp is benefiting piercing. It is not benefiting slashing. Uh, so if you picked a different perks than I suggested, Fan Knife might be better, but for the most part, Volley will do you better in this build. Never ending story. We'll talk about that one later, not now. I'll talk about that in the act four. There is just, but, but you look at it, it says require stands at two. So caveat, Put a pin in it. We'll talk about it later. Uh, Rain of Arrows, sure. It's just very, very expensive for energy-wise. If you have it, great. You can do that instead of the volley. Uh, that will feel a awful lot like a Sylvie build because it's, it's basically Sylvie build. Uh, yes. But remember, we do want songs. So I am keeping as many songs as possible. You want to find as many chance of accuracy as possible. Uh, obviously, there is a certain point that too many is that there is such a thing as too many because we want to, in our first turn, be able to draw heavy metal and power slave. So really, the cards you're absolutely looking for are things that say draw the deflex, the camouflages, the setups of the world. <clears throat> Heck, I might even be interested to run a vigilance or two if I had a surplus of energy and I just was not catching my power slave and heavy metal at the same turn. Uh, we will pick up this Adrenaline if you have the spare shards. Not a key thing. I didn't do it on any of my runs, but it definitely makes things smoother, especially if you can get through your entire deck, because if you're running things like Volley or Reverbent Verse, if you count all this up, I have more than 10 energy for all my cards. So depending on how much you're being fed by your team or how much you're trying to spend on one turn, extra energy does help. But I want to limit the amount of cards that aren't sharp songs, heavy metal, power slave, or things that find me the heavy metal because that is our key component here. Uh, we'll talk about pets and items. Let's talk about pets here first. Uh, pets. I mean, Betty is the end-all be-all of Gustav. If you can get it corrupted, fantastic. This will hit everyone, does insane damage, does mind damage. The mind damage is increased by your sharp. So it is a win all around. Uh, you could also go with Leanti because it does, nope, yep, because it does piercing damage. So this is a perfectly viable one if for some reason you don't have Betty, but you do have Leanti. Um, those are really the two best ones for Gustav. Uh, and then, of course, your team should be running Oculi because it applies insane damage. Whoever's running it, preferably they have max insane charges or they're Nesglect so that your team has lots of insane on the enemies. And uh, yeah, those are really the only ones that matter too much to Gustav. So let's do the combat and then let's talk about items. So the reason I'm in the green biome is because this has an item I want and this has an item I want. So let's do the combat and we'll talk about those afterwards. I need another song because I'm just singing whispering lies to myself. I, uh, I do have... Henry's got the, the super duper forest crown, so his deck is a little different than you would normally see. Is yeah, I still need speed up Nez. Uh, one, two draws. Yep, this is good. Two draws. I'd like to find my mark. Not find my mark, but I do this. Plus this. And now draw my mark? Nope. I was looking for Wild Hunt. The, uh... 
Speed of the Nesbite. Powerful to Gustav. Expert Tractor to the Wolf. Make sure that he draws some sort of howl. I've got a lot of howls here, so let's do... Oh, click on the wrong buttons here, folks. I think this should be fine. Uh, I already sped up Nez, so that doesn't matter here. Give that Gustav and call it a day. This is uh, plus 15 all resistances, so that is like a little harder. <laughs> like one more how, please. Go. And then a little bit of carnage in my life. Nez, can you uh, rest your piece? Help the team out. And protect yourself from from your insanity. See if your insanity can be cured. Uh, draw. I got three draws here. Scry. And I like everything else. <laughs> Don't mind me. Nezglect is sometimes a little difficult for me to parse out what I'm supposed to do with him because you have certain play patterns. I can't do the delay responses until I find the banish and I have to I can't play the other things until I have the other card but I don't have that card talent card yet because it's not a sorry so heavy metal we got that we're getting that we'll get rid of the shiv we'll get rid of the whispering lies I still don't have the the yelling thing I don't remember what it's called face melt um I think we have we have only two camouflages we really only need one camouflage I need this power slave so uh camouflage does draw a card but these chance of accuracy are our best card for sure i do want the volley set up as drawing cards so really it is this camouflage that's weakest link or the deflect yeah probably the camouflage mm -hmm. all right so i've got the buffer here so i can delay the response and give him some more cards and like i said the most important thing here is not that i'm giving him this bless that I'm giving him the cards and or I'm filtering his deck so that he gets that very, the, he finds his correct pieces here. Because here it is, heavy metal, power slave. Blam, hit them all, and then another trigger. Watch this, chain of initiative, accuracy, blam. Blam, it's just, it's just hurting the people. It's just, it's just doing, doing mean things to them. And then I camouflage and I volley and they're just all gone. Like it's, it's. There's just a lot of sharp, and sharp does damage. And that's why I said he's a <laughs> kind of singer, because he is... <clears throat> Sorry, I I can't help myself. Hopefully that doesn't annoy anyone too much. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, the reason I'm going, I say go green biome first, is because sharp is a big deal for Gustav. And so if you go here to the empty village and you steal everything, you have one of the very the only item in the game that has sharp on the armor slot so if you have power enough powerful going on or you have other people giving it to you or you have some other means for it remember your power slave does give up to six powerful if you have a full hand and the powerful perk and you have the max and you have this one not not one of these ones <clears throat> so as long as you have your power under control then you can pick up something like tiki mask even the default one is base three sharp so this is a fantastic pickup for Gustav. And then, of course, I do want War Banner to make up some more powerful problems. So now I have even less power issues and I should be good to go. Then, so that's that's if you steal from the Empty Village, you can get the Tiki Mask. And then if you come in here to go to the Odd War and you do combat there, you can get the Mystic Staff. So this Mystic Staff here, the reason that it's nice is because it is a it is the only guaranteed version of all damage. Like, <laughs> so these are all the things that trigger off his spells. And the only one that's guaranteed is this Emerald Staff. But I say guaranteed because you have to have the Emerald, which is not guaranteed. So you can't do that. And Yilmer, this, you are not playing healing spells and that doesn't increase your damage. So the only like guaranteed weapon is the Mystic Staff. It's not great, it's not fantastic. It does add a little bit of powerful, and remember that Power Slave is a song spell. So that song that Power Slave will give you six powerful if you have the max version. And then it'll also give you three more powerful because it triggers Mystic Staff. So that basically gives you nine out of your ten powerful. So you can do the powerful all by yourself. You don't need any help from anyone just by having Mystic Staff and playing Power Slave with a full hand. That's the part where you need help is you need people to fill your hand up so that your Power Slave is stronger. But anyway, Mystic Staff is fantastic. 
But the things you're looking for in your stuff are going to be things that give you sharp charges. Not that give you instances of sharp, because if you saw, he already had three chance of, of accuracy. He's got the um, Iron Maiden thing going on. What's that called? Uh, uh, whatever. He's got he's got this thing. Heavy metal. <laughs> he's got heavy metal pocket. So this says gain sharp. His cards are to say gain sharp. So we don't need things that say give us more sharp. We need things that say give us more sharp charges. So specifically, I want, if you notice, there's a lot of these corrupted cards that say sharp charges. So in the early act, if you can buy or find two of these in a row, these will be fantastic. These will be your end all be all for the game. You pick one of these up, you're great. And Tempest does not work for us because this does not give us sharp charges. It just gives us more instances of sharp when you play ranged attacks, which the ranged attack, if you notice, is the very last thing I do. So this, this is not really a good card for us. We want sharp charges. I've said that like five times because it's a big deal. And you noticed the only things that have that are all these corrupt, like every single one of these is a corrupted version. So you can't really guarantee it, which is why I said Mystic Staff for weapon. And then Tiki Mask, I already told you how to get that one. Brass Amulet this is a fantastic pickup. Uh, Gustav is the one that should wear it. No one else on the team. If you can get two of them, great. Plus two sharp charges, you will just melt everyone. You, you'll be at 50 stacks of sharp like after three songs. It's hilarious. And then here again, we don't need assassins tools because it says when stealth game sharp, we don't need more instances of get sharp. We need stronger sharp, which unfortunately this frozen arrows, you have to have Sylvie on the team to pick this up and go to this node. So if you have Sylvie, great, go here, pick this up. That'd be a great reason to go to the ice biome because this is a, just a fantastic pickup. Everything else is kind of meh. Like, I mean, I'm running lock picks because it's better than nothing, but it's not as powerful as sharp charges. All right, and then of course you do, you do still need to maintain your powerful. Like I said, the one of the easiest ways to do that is this mystic staff and your power slave. Uh, but you could also just do that in the armor slot, especially in the early game. Titan gauntlets is guaranteed. And I do say go to the green biome. So that is another option but that conflicts with your tiki mask. So it's it's pick your poison, whichever one helps you the best there. Power coil is always the best pickup for any DPS. If you find that, pick it up, use it. There is absolutely no question on that one. And then last but not least, what you're looking for are things that say all damage. And again, these are just a lot of corrupted cards. You notice these are all, most of these are corrupted versions. Continuum blade, that's, it, you don't do melee attacks, but it is plus two all damage, that's great. Crank crossbow, this one is really good for us. The You're not going to trigger that ranged attacks draw card part very well, but it is better than just a straight, you know, plus two damage. It's plus two damage and sometimes health us. I'd say the book is better for sure because the beginning of our turn, we're playing lots of spells. So I'm looking for the arch book. I'm looking for the destiny. I mean, who's not looking for destiny? It's a fantastic card. Uh, and then, I mean, I wouldn't say no to fountain pen. You can even craft a book. Uh, for yourself. There is a single book for uh, scouts and it is actually a song. It's, it's song related. So I wouldn't say no to it. Just make sure you grab the book that replaces itself. And then this will actually draw you a card with fountain pen. That's okay. But you, you lose out the benefit of inspire to your entire team. So normally someone else on your team will carry that. What I'm looking for? Nether blade. That's what I'm looking for. This is the end all BL. This says, hey, all damage plus three. Yes, please. And when you deal damage with a hit, do another hit. I'm pretty sure this doesn't work with um, heavy metal. I'm not 100% sure if someone if someone has a nether blade and a heavy metal and wants to figure that out, that'd be great. Because I want to see if you can just play a chant of accuracy and then hit them twice, because that would be hilarious. Um, I'm not sure if they trigger off each other, though. I haven't had that opportunity to test that. I could see it going either way. Nether blade is the end all be all. And, and like I said, a lot of these just, there are a lot of corrupted versions that say all damage. This one says draw cards. That's great on a spell. So we want things that say draw. We want things that say all damage. Uh, there's not many of the draws we can trigger because there's, it's only the spell books and it's this song spells. Cause not even the mind book does it. There's, um, where's this, this mind book, even though we're doing mind damage, if you notice none of our songs are actually mind, they're, they're just song spells. They're not mind spells, song spell. So we, we, we're kind of limited on what card draw we can trigger in the weapon slot. So again, that's why I say, go steal the Tiki mask, go beat these people up for the mystic staff, 
deal with repercussions of stealing from these villagers when they come try to beat you up and uh, move on with your life from there. Yep, uh, that should cover it for items. Let's go to what's next on the list. Act four. So in act four, I do need to now talk about never ending story. So this is exactly what we're looking for for this build. There is one hiccup. Requires stanza two. So you could wait for turn two to do this, but if you can already go through the entire game doing everything on turn one and setting up for this heavy metal turn, why artificially delay that to turn two? When volley is working just as well as this never ending story. I say just as well. Never ending story is obviously better. But volley is doing us just fine. And I'm picking up Reverberant Verse for the Archon fight because this is a great one for you to Encore. You'll 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 do your Heavy Metal, Power Slave, Encore. I'm uh, sorry, not Encore. Uh, heavy Metal, Power Slave, all your chance of accuracy, all that kind of sharp stuff. Get the max stacks. And then you'll do Encore and two Reverberant Verses on the Archon, and that'll basically kill the Archon. But yes, it would be better if you could just never earn story in the Archon that you have to wait till turn two or at least until you have stanza two and there is one way around that so there is unfortunately the the game here is not the the search engine here is not very good about this but right here corrupted chant of initiative you gain stanza two this is as far as i can tell the only way to get stanza two on turn one and you have to be the one to own the copy of chant of initiative and it turns out there's a way to guarantee this either have Zek on the team and do it way early in the game, which is an option, or the, um, oh, we, we'll look at it here in a second, or on the Act 4, there is the bell that says you can corrupt a card, and then you can pick up, instead of picking up this, um, this reverberant voice, you pick up Never Ending Story, you'll pick up, uh, Never Ending Story, one copy of this, and then you'll pick up, um, one Chant of Initiative, doesn't matter which version, because you're gonna go corrupt it, and then you're going to go to the, the bell and corrupt it. I'll show you that here in a second. Let's make sure I didn't miss anything on the deck here. I forgot to look at the rest of the team's Act 2 deck list. I've been doing that a lot. Um, shoot, I could have sworn I replaced this with something. Oh, this is supposed to be an adrenaline. I apologize, guys. I, I didn't save the copy. So this is actually supposed to be um, like that. Because remember, I said I wasn't playing with the adrenaline, but I do highly recommend the adrenaline because... I, I wished I had had it on multiple occasions, and I didn't do as many practice runs on Gustav as I normally do because it was just way too easy to play him. Like it was, it was, it was very streamlined. So we have lots of card draw because we're trying to get to power heavy metal power slave. We're keeping one small weapon to trigger our our talent here, the uh, the wide sleeves. Uh, we have a good song to encore, reverberant voice. The verse, this is the best one for the Archon fight to Encore. Uh, and for AoE fights, you just Encore the Power Slave. And for single target fights, you Encore the Reverberant Verse. And or if you go that route where I say you corrupt the Chant of Initiative, or then we will show you that here in a second. So let's look at these other decks. Yep, Nezglik got a big thick deck because uh, he can draw a lot of cards. Um, Andrin and Magnus. And let's go take a look at that. So the bell is down here. If you bring the Chant of Initiative down here, you can corrupt it, and then you can guarantee Stanza 2 on turn 1. You get it only for a couple fights before the final act. The That never-ending story will do you well for both the single target and AoE fights. Since it is a repeat multiple times, all monsters, it is just a fantastic set piece for us. But we are not going to use that for this run. I will let you go and see that glory for yourself. Uh, not a very hard fight, but hopefully this gives us a good showcase. Tell me lies, tell me whispering lies. Also, another thing you can cheat with Chant of Initiative. So, um, if Andrin here corrupts this Chant of Initiative, then suddenly Andrin can be playing Ballads of Evasion and, um, oh, I don't have it here yet, but the, uh, Ballad of Conquest on turn one, which is pretty slick. All right, let's see. I don't need those. I do need speed up Nez. I don't even need to have speed up Nez. Mm -hmm. 
Would you like to draw some cards? God howl, anyone? I'm just putting out a little bit of mark. I don't need to, but I'm just, it's hard for me to not play the efficient route sometimes. Do some howling. I could have played Citadel if I wanted to. Also, I had plenty of extra shards. I could have, uh, Upgraded that citadel, but I don't need to. Let's go here. Don't need to play that. <laughs> chosen one. So once I play Chosen One, I can play the Benedictions. This is me talking out loud so that you have something to fill the space and so I can play this correctly the first time and not screw it up. Uh, once I have Banish, I can play the day delay responses. So banishing, I'm still banishing this Shiv. I eventually, I can't banish it on the final fight, but I'm not there yet. I do want this volley. I don't need the verse and I don't need one of these camouflages. So now I can play the delay responses. <laughs> I expect Nezglek to prophesy. That is all that is expected of the Nez. Let's bottom down here. Meditate. Sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Five left. So that's two benedictions or divine power and a benediction. So one last delay response. And Gustav is set up nice and pretty. I will be going over a video here soon that talks about which boons are actually useful these days because not all are created equal and I have lots of them in this fight. All right, so heavy metal, power slave, but I'm gonna encore the power slave, so I'm gonna encore the power slave. But now my hand is kind of weak, so let me set up to fill my hand back up. And now I will power slave twice. They're all gonna take lots of damage. I'm gonna get lots of sharp. Technically, I should do the second power slave after I do some of these chants of accuracy, but things just start falling over once I play the chants because every chant of accuracy is doing 350 damage. Like, what the crazy. And I could volley or I could just whisper some lies because that's hilarious to me. Yes. So I actually wish I had a harder corruption to show you. And there's that ballot conquest I need to show you a harder fight because um, it's pretty easy mode. I'm not going to lie. Pretty easy mode. Anyway, uh, and it gets gets even easier if you go to the bell and do the corrupted things. I I honestly haven't done it myself yet, but it's a lot of fun. I have seen it in action, and um, yes. So what do we got here for the rest of the video? We've done combat team comps. So Gustav is very self sufficient. Let me go to a different screen to talk about team comps so that I can talk straight. Wrong screen. I can do this. I can do this. So Gustav really doesn't need much help. He just wants cards. Insane is very helpful. So Nesglick is the, the best fit 100% because it gives lots of cards. And Nesglick can always inspire. Uh, even if you're not cheesing in some sort of way to get lots of bless or lots of uh, energize or stuff like that. Um, even the weakest Nez is still a great fit because even if all you're doing is doing a clarity or two or a divination or something like that or scries, like just all the things Nesglik does helps Gustav's game plan. He's applying insane, he's making Gustav's first draw better, and he can be applying uh, lots of ins inspire to give lots of cards. So Nesglik is fantastic. Uh, I also think that any team that can, um, if you're running Nesglik, there is a very big speed difference. Nesglik is base 13 and Gustav is base 17. So you do have to have someone hold on maybe that's with my perks that might be with my perks um either way nez is slow gustav's fast so i recommend having a scout speed up nezglect or you have to wait for turn two with gustav which you could do and then you could do that never-ending story without corrupting the chant of initiative but then you have to survive turn one and all that goes with it they might purge your sharp that kind of stuff you do have the anti-charge anti-purging sharp talent but a lot can go wrong and it is just yes so either speed him up or plan for a turn two Gustav because Gustav just goes faster than Nesglect. 
And uh, other than that, there's really not anyone fits. Like, I really think that the core team for this group was... The reason I did this is because Nezglitz fits so well, I want to speed him up and then someone to apply vulnerable. Uh, and that's just, that's that's the usual build-ins. Honestly, I could be running Sylvie as my Andrin, which is weird, but I mean, she could make it work. I would just have to cut all of her cards. Uh, I could be running Heiner as the Magnus, but then Sylvie or Andrin would have to speed both these two up, or I really would have to play into that round two option. If I'm playing into that round two option, then maybe I'd be running like a Evelyn or a Cornelius. Evelyn kind of clashes with Gustav because her claim to fame is enchant weapons, but Gustav's claim to fame is, hey, I have my own enchant weapons for mine damage. So, And if you are going the round two version of Gustav, then you can go the ethereal weapons a little better because then you can put ethereal weapons on yourself for round one, do all your prep, get all your sharp up, and then round two, do the big turn. So, or maybe turn one, you do heavy metal, get lots of sharp on yourself, and then turn two, you finish everyone off. Whatever fits your, your fancy. Um, I think that covers it. Maluka doesn't really have... She's like the next closest to insane, like Nezglect. Um, I don't think I can think of anything that's really... Nothing really synergized there, though. So, if you're bringing a healer, it's to give bless to Gustav. If you're bringing a scout, it's to speed up someone else on the team to match Gustav's speed. If you're bringing a warrior, it's for vulnerable. And if you're bringing a mages, it's because you like energy. Who doesn't like energy? Yep, that's all I got for team comps. Uh, let's go do how to unlock the frog boy. So, Gustav sits right here on the lonely rock. Uh, you come here uh, in the green biome. You go talk to him. He gives you a quest. I honestly don't remember what it is but it's something very straightforward like go to this node and the quest will show you the way there i don't remember being anything awkward or weird uh that is everything uh if you like what you see please let me know by uh i, I work well on praise i also have recently added channel memberships those really help financially speaking to make sure that I can continue to make these videos. You'll notice that there's an ebb and flow to how often I make these videos. Uh, the more consistent times is when I've got food on the table and I've got a house. Um, other times I'm homeless. So it is it is what it is. I'm doing my best. You don't have to worry. I will do um, as much of these videos as often as I can. And I will catch you later. Peace.